Prior to the current legislation, law enforcement was limited to a few ineffective remedies for alcohol-related offenses, such as confiscating alcohol and suspending voting privileges. Now, if you're caught drinking and voting, you can lose your driver's license on the spot for at least 12 hours, and you run the risk of being charged with impaired operation of a vessel, which carries with it some pretty severe penalties. To see how much is known about the new legislation in the boating community, we took our cameras dockside to talk to some local boaters. Do you know what the laws are as they relate to drinking and boating? I mean, if you end up being pulled over and you blow over, have you any idea what the laws are as they relate to that? Yes, they're exactly the same as, as driving a car. The exact, exact same suspensions and, and uh, time frames and everything. I think they just passed a new law on that, as I believe, just recently. I think it's a uh, $40 fine for drinking over the limit. And then if you're caught a second time, then it's uh, um, suspension of your boating license, I believe. I do know the rules, yes. And what are they? Uh, that uh, unless you have a, um, a kitchen on the boat, there is to be no alcohol at all on the boat. And if there is a kitchen, you've got to be anchored or docked. Although most people seem to have a pretty good idea of what the rules are for alcohol on the water, there's still some confusion as to the exact implications of Bill 209. If you now get charged and are subsequently convicted, there are a number of penalties that go along with your criminal conviction. For example, minimum of a thousand dollar fine, minimum of a year's prohibition from driving. You're going to have legal fees from anywhere from two thousand to ten thousand dollars. You're going to see your insurance rates go up probably five thousand dollars a year for at least the first three years. You're going to have to, uh, uh, now as a result of Bill 209, you'll also have to pay $150 to have your license reinstated. You're also going to have to get, engage in the ministry's um, uh, alcohol uh, um, countermeasure sanctions. So that's going to cost you around $600 to be involved in that, in that program. As well, you're going to have an ignition interlock on your vehicle for the first year. So that's after the year's suspension. Now you get your license back. Now you still have to pay $1,350 to have that ignition interlock in your vehicle for the next year. Uh, so it's gonna cost you about $20,000. It's important to point out that while the current legislation is aimed at zero tolerance, there are instances where having alcohol aboard your vessel is perfectly legal. Let's take a look at the rules governing the use of alcohol on the water. In the case of a small pleasure craft, such as fishing boats, runabouts, and personal watercraft, you are not allowed to consume alcohol while operating the vessel or even as a passenger while underway. But what about that weekend boat run into town to pick up a few cases for the cottage? Alcohol can certainly be uh, transported legally uh, in your vessel, um, as long as it's in a sealed container and in, stored in a closed compartment, you can transport it from one location to another. But as soon as you open that bottle of alcohol within the, uh, the vessel, that's when it becomes illegal. A larger vessel that has sleeping accommodations, permanent cooking facilities and a fixed head, and that is at anchor or moored to the dock is considered a home. And as such, alcohol can be consumed on board. But remember, while underway, it is still illegal to drink alcohol while operating your vessel, even if your boat is equipped with these facilities. The position of the Canadian Safe Boating Council is drinking and boating is illegal. A conviction of impaired boating is a criminal offence and has serious financial and lifestyle consequences. You will lose your boating privileges and with Bill 209 in Ontario, you will lose your driving privileges the same as if you were driving your motor vehicle. So the next time you're thinking about having a drink before heading out in the water, think about it. Is it really worth the risk? Treat your boat like you would your vehicle. You don't drink and drive, you don't drink and boat.